So okay, we're both up here. This will be pretty brief. Uh, between the two of us, we have a total of four months in our new position. So there won't be a whole lot of detail up here. If we could maybe hold off on the real technical heavy questions, that would be great. <laughs> Rob Miller, um, we're both going to do a little bit of introduction, uh, a little bit of our background before we get into this. But um, undergraduate degree in forestry, master's in agriculture. Uh, I was a APIS PPQ officer for a little while. I also worked in um, industry uh, with uh, Bayer and BASF. And I did regulatory affairs for the development of GMOs. So if you ever want to talk about big ag or GMOs, let me know. I did that for a number of years. Now, uh, back up here in Michigan, I was in Cary, North Carolina. I checked. It's 66 degrees down there today. Very glad to be here. Uh, but as I mentioned, we haven't been in these positions for very long, so we're going to tell you sort of what uh, the department's doing and what we'll be doing going forward. Uh, I'll pass it over to Susan. Hi, my name's uh, Susie Hyatt. Um, I uh, just started in this position um, like less than a month ago, but I've worked for MDAR as a um, plant health slash nursery inspector. I am familiar with wild type. I just did their inspection this past summer. I don't know if you remember me. <laughs> um, I got my undergraduate degree from the University of Hawaii in, in Botany and worked for the Oahu Invasive Species Committee, which is quite similar to a CISMA, um, for eight years doing um, invasive species management and habitat restoration. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but Hawaii is known as the invasive or the endangered species capital of the world because it occupies like about two percent of the uh, country's landmass, but has more than twenty-five percent of all listed endangered species, um, federally listed endangered species. Um, I moved back to Michigan, is where I'm from, and um, studied ecology at Eastern Michigan, um, and had a fellowship with, um, thank you, had a fellowship with um, NOAA's Glances um, project, you guys are familiar with that, it's a really long acronym, um, before starting with MDARC. So, um, MDAR has been surveying for Phytophthora remorum for over 10 years. That's mainly via the nursery pathway. Um, our lab is now um, accredited so they can do their own like, testing for um, Phytophthora remorum. We mainly do targeted surveys, such as like the so big box stores, they're required to pre notify us when they're shipping in certain host species like rhododendrons. So we go, our nursery staff goes and looks for possibly symptomatic plants and um, collects samples and takes them to the lab and they test them uh, for Phytophthora remorum. We also collect water samples. In 2019, um, they were collected from eight different sites, two um, collections per site, so a total of 16 samples, all of which were negative. And we also do trace forward inspections as needed, meaning when um, a nursery like out on the west coast or something that has plants that test positive for Phytophthora more, and then they get shipped to Michigan nurseries, then we'll go to those nurseries and find out where they've shipped them and um, try to you know, follow the pathway to collect the plants and get all tested for Phytophthora remorum. Uh, I put the life cycle up on here. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with it. This um, organism does travel um, through water, so um, checking the water sources is actually really, really important. That's why we do the water um, sampling as well as the symptomatic a possibly symptomatic plant um, sampling. Uh, we did have some, uh, quite a few trace forwards um, this year. There's a little bit of like lag time, so we're working on um, with the USDA and with other um, states, uh, nursery, um, with, through the Horticulture Inspection Society to try to be able to have more timely response. So for uh, one of my responsibilities is, is HWA and helping to coordinate. I know coordination's up there. Uh, I work with a lot of people in DNR and uh, the CISMA folks working on this. So that's something that's going to be evolving. Where do I fit in? How do I help out? Um, one thing that MZAR uh, does do is interior and exterior quarantine. So there you're thinking about folks that are moving around the nursery stock. Basically, we want to prevent this from spreading. <coughs> Uh, reporting, basically getting numbers from our CISMAs, uh, making sure everybody's aware of the successes that we're having, 
and uh, I'm going to be working with some folks here at MDAR and in DNR to help keep the statewide strategy up to date and to include our successes in that. So here we have uh, spotted lanternfly, ALB, and other exotic pests. So one of the clear demarcations when it comes to exotics between DNR and MDARD is think of MDARD as being really concerned with exotics that aren't here, aren't here yet, that might be coming down the pipeline, right? So, for example, Sue mentioned Tree of Heaven. What are we doing with that? What's the guidance there? Kill it all, trap trees, survey. That's something that we're working with, uh, with USDA. Uh, USDA PPQ is heavily involved with these exotic pests <coughs> that aren't here yet. So we're working with them to develop a response plan. I, one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about um, Fatafara Morum is the, U, the USDA is currently working on updating the map that shows um, where it um, can establish. Currently, um, we don't believe it can overwinter in Michigan because it does, at um, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero Celsius, it, it has been known to, to die. So I just wanted to put that out there. Another thing that I don't know how much people are aware of, and I know that Sarah Osage touched on this with our nursery inspections, but we, um, whenever we go out and do um, the, the uh, nursery inspectors go out and do these inspections, they hand out these pest alerts. I just put one up there as an example, but we have them for hemlock woolly adulterate, oak wilt, um, beech bark disease, um, spotted lanternfly, lots of different, and we, we hand them out, um, and we're also looking for these looking for these pests. We have um, 18 nursery inspectors and every licensed uh, nursery grower and dealer is inspected. We also um, hand out the list of all the uh, Michigan quarantines and as well as um, the Enripa prohibited and restricted pests. And we look for these um, species when we're doing inspections. Um, in 2018, one of our nursery inspectors found parrot feather being sold um, under, uh, mislabeled, it was uh, called mare's tail, and then also one was being sold as Myrophyllum um, um, brasiliensis instead of aquaticum, which was a previous name, and they didn't realize that they were the same species. So the plants were restricted from sale. They took a sample, got it tested at the lab to verify that it was in fact parrot feather, and then um, once they got the um, official uh, verification, the nursery was made to destroy the plants, and the wholesaler was contacted, um, and then a, a rejection letter was um, was sent out. Um, so we're always looking for these. Uh, one of the nurseries that I inspected had Japanese knotweed growing all over their nursery, and in, even in the root ball of trees that they were growing for sale. So I um, obviously restricted those from, sit, from sale and actually referred them to their local SISMA, the Michigan SISMA, to um, see about possibly getting some help for um, treatment. It was all over the place. So now let's talk a little bit about pest survey. And this is something that um, sort of is more, uh, MDAR is more heavily involved. So when I'm talking about pest survey, CAPS and PPA, it's Cooperative Agricultural Pest Survey and uh, Plant Pest Act. Those are the funding sources for our surveys that we do here in the state. Those are federal dollars that we use to survey for potential exotic pests. And so we're going to go through some lists of stuff that we are actively surveying for. We surveyed for last year and we will be surveying for this year. And just know everything that's on that list is on that list because it's a potential exotic and we have a scientifically approved lure for it. So these think of these funnel traps or delta traps or what are they call panel vein wing traps, these traps that some of our researchers will set up for us. So something to know about this program is that um, we coordinate it, we get all the grant dollars and we partner with MSU to have them actually do the legwork, hang the traps, identify locations. And that's a lot of people at Dead McCall's lab. But then we also have uh, Isaac Rufus and Rufus, 
Yeah, Rufus Isaacs, yes, thank you. And uh, Larry Goot will be doing, they also do some traffic for us. And one of the things I do is, you know, we have to keep up all this grant reporting with uh, the federal authorities, so I'm in charge of that as well. So here we just have some lists. So these are the things that we're actually looking for, right? You may recognize some of these as some serious pests in other places. Um, you need to think globally as well as in the U.S. These have been identified as potential pests. So we'll go through this list here. We have a couple slides, but these are the things that we are actively surveying for. <coughs> so the tortricids there, those are going to be problems in your orchards and vineyards and things like that. Potato cyst nematode, we certify uh, hundreds of acres every year that they're clear of those three species of potato cyst nematode so that those folks can export their seed potatoes, and that's mostly to Canada. And then, of course, we do hear more surveys. And then honeybee here, we have folks in MDAR, our plant health folks, uh, they do work with uh, USDA to check on basically the health of all of our apiaries around here, and they're looking for various diseases uh, and pests. Just a few additional projects to mention. Um, we're working with, starting to work with the DNR on a poss possibility of a firewood certification program. Um, we actually have now two staff members that have been trained um, by the USDA for weed risk assessments. That's myself and Mike Bryan. Um, we're in the beginning stages of working on um, doing research on water hyacinth and water lettuce. And I don't know if you guys are aware, before any species can be added to the um, and prohibited and restricted list. It has to get a weed risk assessment um, and you know come out as being something that is high risk before it will even get to the next stage. Um, we're currently evaluating the need and feasibility of having a mountain pine beetle quarantine. Um, Minnesota and Wisconsin both implemented this. Um, mountain pine beetle has been found in North and South Dakota. Um, as of that, as of yeah, and it's in Colorado, but that's as far um, east as it's gotten, but it's something that we're considering. And we also are working on um, updating our exterior hemlock woolly adelgid quarantine and balsam woolly adelgid quarantine. Although to note, um, there's no major changes. The same um, articles that have been regulated are right? still regulated. Exemptions are still the same. It's mainly cleaning up language so that we can make it um, more enforceable. That's one thing that MDAR is focusing on a lot more um, is um, our quarantine enforcement with um, you know actual you know rejection notices, warning letters, fines, and that kind of thing to make sure that people know that we're serious. Um, do we let everybody know what the actual differentiation is between our positions? Okay, so. I've been doing so myself personally, um, invasive species prevention and response. So a little bit more management of the invasive species program. And Susie's doing the QOL, which is a quality lifestyle. 